It is a privilege to be joined on the summit today by Kelvin Starr, who is the head men's basketball coach at the Masters University in Santa Clarita, California. Coach, win number 300 has been recorded, and so I want to say congratulations for that. Uh, it's, a, it's a milestone victory, but it's one of those things, too, that I have to ask you. Did you know that the next win would be number 300 for your career at the time it happened? I actually didn't. I was so consumed in being ready to play College of Idaho, this dominant NAI program, that that was really my focus. Um, I knew it was around that time to, you know, we keep some sort of track of that as coaches, obviously. But there's a lot more things that are important than just our wins, our, our win totals as coaches. So, yeah, that, that was a massive game for us, College of Idaho. Um, and, you know, the result was uh, one was very positive. Well, 71-67, I'd, I'd like you to talk about that game, too. You know, you mentioned a, a power in the NAIA National Champions a couple of years ago, number two in the country at uh, at that game time. Tell us a little bit about that victory. Well, College of Idaho is a – they are the dominant program in NAI. The last – if you look at their – Colby, what Colby's done up there is absolutely incredible. I think he's won, like, almost 90% of his games, which is unheard of at any level. Uh, just a, a dominant program. They have a unique style. They play zone the whole game pretty much 99% of the time. Uh, it's, it's kind of hard to get used, you know, get ready for because it's just a different type of style. And they're relentless. They've got an unbelievable culture. Um, and I know we had to kind of match that. So, you know, we do a pretty good job here of our culture too. Um, and I felt like it was, we, you know, we were ready going in, but I, I knew it was going to be a battle. They just don't go away. Um, it was, it was 40 minutes of just like, just right in people's faces the whole time. And, uh, you know, being at home helped us a lot. Our home crowd is, is a big advantage for us. I know they have the same thing up at their place. Um, I don't know, maybe we can get up there next year and play them again. I don't know. I, I'm graduating a lot of guys, so I may not take that on. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. Well, then talk about this year's team and you're talking about the, the, the upperclassmen there nine and one on the season right now, as of this recording, seven consecutive wins. Uh, it sounds like the season's going well. Yeah, it's going well. You never, you never completely happy with where you're at because it's a process, obviously. Um, you don't want to be a complete product in in December. There's no way. No coach wants that. Uh, I, I like our guys. Our, our chemistry is is at another level this year, which is good. The love for each other. I think that's got us over the hump in some of these games. I we lost a lot of offense. Uh, we lost two kids to Division One programs last year. Two leading scorers, Ty Harper and Cam Oriel, and they're both doing well where they went. I'm happy for them. That's a big void. You know, it's it's like almost 30, 34 points a game we have to fill up. Uh, I mean, had another graduate, Jordan Caruso, is a very good player also. So, you know, it's a, some big voids there. Uh, we brought some good players in also, um, but you got to get them into the system. they got to adjust to the culture. Uh, and it's a process. So I, I like our team. I think we're not as good offensively, but I think we're better defensively this year, which is which will I think will bode well down the stretch. We're visiting now with Kelvin Starr from the Masters University here on Midwest Sportsnet, and I encourage you, please take the time to subscribe to the channel. We appreciate that. Uh, we've talked about it before that I have no idea what it does algorithmically according to YouTube, but it is encouraging. So <laughs> I encourage you take the time to subscribe to today. Uh, Coach, you prior to taking the position you have now at, at the Masters, you were an executive pastor at a church as well as being the director of operations at Top Gun Basketball Academy. Uh, what goes into filling dual roles like that? I know there's a that you have a lot on your plate. Yeah, well, the executive pastor role was with one of my college teammates. He's the head pastor of the church, and, and I went to work with him for a couple of years and help him through some stuff that had going on in his church. And that was that was that was fun to be back with a teammate because when you play with college ball with somebody, there's just a if anyone that's done it, you have these deep relationships that last you know a lifetime. Uh, so I was happy to go back and work with him um, in San Diego there. But the, the Top Gun thing was kind of a deal where my kids were involved playing in that program. And, and the guys that ran that program, we had built a relationship when I was coaching at San Diego Christian uh, prior to that uh, coming up to Masters. And I, I just felt like I could help their program. And they felt like it was a good kind of symbiotic relationship. I, was, I did a lot of stuff with the parents, kind of keeping them realistic about their kids and the, their opportunity for college down the road, having had some experience recruiting. And then I kind of just um, just helped those guys run that program. It was a local club program. I'm, I'm not sure it's in existence anymore, but it was a really uh, good program at the time. Had like 15 to 20 club teams that would play across the county and, and, and travel to L.A. area. Um, and it was fun. It was fun to be a part of that. It just kept me, it kind of kept me in hoop a little bit 
when I, I got out of college coaching, um, you know, 10 years prior to that. And so it kept me involved and actually helped me a little bit keep those connections when I went back in to coaching at Masters after being out for 10 years. 300 wins and, and more than that now, but that that's it's a big number. And I, I, I visit with coaches about milestone numbers uh, periodically because I, I think it's fun to recognize that and enjoy that. And coaches often humbly will talk about uh, the fact it's just longevity, which I still say in 2024, longevity is a big deal too. It's not what it, what it once was on the college level or I guess on any level of coaching. But you know, you're doing it large chunks at a time. In your time at the Masters, 20 plus years every single year, 24 and nine last season. Talk about the consistency there and, and what it takes to get to 300. Are there, is there a key or are there keys to being that consistent? Well, I think you have to have a culture that you, you stick with. I think young coaches, sometimes they're all over the place. Like, I'm going to change to this or do this or do that. I'll read this book or watch this video. I, I was blessed to start with a guy by the name of Art Wilmore down in San Diego Christian when I was assistant coach right after I graduated for five years. And then he went over to Point Loma Nazarene and I got offered the job at 30 years old, head coaching job. But I, I was, I wasn't really, I was, I wasn't wise. Let's say that <laughs> definitely not wise enough to take the job, but I did have a, a body, like what I learned from coach Wilmore and his system and kind of just, I just clung to that. And I just kind of said, okay, this is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm going to be as a coach and then put my temperament and my personality on it. And I think that's what I've tried to do, to stay consistent with, um, I'm not an X's and O's guru. I'm not like, you know, for me, it's more about leadership and about just getting guys all in one direction and then getting them to do the same thing consistently. Uh, and that's probably the biggest challenge in 2024. It's a different generation for sure. A lot of people talk about that, but there's a lot of distractions with social media and just this, just kids are just different with COVID coming off COVID too. And it's just not the same as it used to be. So I think culture now is even more important and getting buy-in on that and staying consistent. I think kids at the end of the day cling to that. They like, they like consistency. They like to know exactly what I have to do. So that's kind of what we've, that's, I think that's what a lot of success has come from and then support. Right. So like when I was out for 10 years for John MacArthur, the president of the, you know, he's now the chancellor of the university of the masters. He, he, he called and, and took a chance on me being out of co coaching for 10 years and has absolutely supported me um, with resources and, you know, assistant coach, good assistant coaches and the school has been uber supportive. And that's a big deal too. You can't have success without that support. Um, that allows you to get the best, you know, the best players in that fit your school. Um, and it's just all that goes into it. Right. And then, you got to have good players. Like you got to have players. You got to have horses. You know, coach can do all he wants. <laughs> Guys have to play and get it done on the court. And we've had some really good players over the years, some all Americans. And I've been blessed to have relationships with those kids. And at the end of the day, for me, it's the wins are great. We want to win. Like anyone who says they don't want to win is a, is lying. Uh, but you know, it, it's it's the character development. It's those relationships. It's the long term play. It's for me, it's eternity, right? It's these kids, it's the eternal scoreboard. It's getting these kids um, understanding that Jesus Christ needs to be Lord of their life and that living for him is the most important thing. Absolutely, coach. I, I, I like that phrase, eternal scoreboard. I, I want to ask you then, since we've talked about what's gone on, what's going on, let's look ahead just a little bit in, in the remainder of our time. Uh, you all are traveling to Merced on Thursday, and then uh, in, in a week you have three teams in four days at the Cactus, Cla Cactus Classic there in Glendale, Arizona. And then after the calendar turns, the GSAC schedule really kicks in fully. Tell us a little bit about the, the season in, in the next little bit. Yeah, Merced is is a much improved program. They're going Division Two next year, so they've got some more resources in. And Coach Fan does a great job. So we played them earlier in the year. We're actually down twelve at half and had to come back and to beat them. Um, so we're a little nervous, a little anxious about that game on the road. It's a four hour drive up north, uh, but you know we're working hard this week to get ready for it. We'll see how that goes. Um, the Cactus Classic will be a challenge. Three games in four days. Three of the Frontier teams, which are all good teams. Montana finishing with Montana Tech, who's actually ranked ahead of us right now. And um, again, great program. They've, I think they've won 29 games last year, 27 games the year before. So that's going to be a challenge. 
And then the conference starts in January and we got our first two games, I hope, and ACU, the top two teams in the conference that we have to face. Um, so that's going to be a challenge too. But, I, you know, they're all, well, every game's tough. And I think when you when you build a program too and you, you get everybody's best shot, um, so you got to be ready every time you step on the floor. Absolutely. Well, Coach, congratulations on, on again, another milestone victory with win number 300. The Mustangs 9-1 and one so far in 2024-2025 and a seven-game winning streak, showing no signs of slowing down. Coach, those upperclassmen, I, uh, we, uh, we wish them success this season and, and uh, uh, a deep run, not only through the regular season, but into the postseason for you. Coach Kelvin Starr, congratulations again, and thank you so much for taking time with us today here on the Summit. No, thanks for having us. Appreciate it.